Okay, so this video is all about the stage manager with the full screen and how my experience is after all these months of using it. But here's the thing, after all these months, I actually moved back to a proper computer as a computer because I just don't think that iPad is a computer. But it's a good computer replacement for many people. And one of the reasons why I can say is actually the apps and the stage manager with full screen support. So that actually opens up a big opportunity for people to use it more professionally than they ever could in the past. So the stage manager experience on it is much stable now, like really, really stable. At this point, I use it every single day. I have never gone back to the old style because I just don't really like that. This one is fantastic. I really love it. Now, it's a different UI though. It's a totally different UI than what a Mac would offer you or even a PC or even Samsung Galaxy DeX because they have a typical UI that does all the things the same way, whether you switch to the Mac or switch to the Windows or even DeX. The iPad experience is a little too different. It is mostly touch optimized for the iPad and the same thing actually is also on the monitor. So the monitor with the mouse seems a little wastage of space. Yeah, literally. It has too many spaces in between. It tries to move the windows here and there of its own. That's actually annoying to some people. For me, it isn't because I know how to use them and I've been using it for so long that I kind of got accustomed to it. I have zero problems with it. But most people who are coming from something like PC or something like that, they have an insanely big problem learning this thing alone. Now, there are certain things that are good on the iPad is that it supports like up to 6K resolution. Even Samsung Galaxy Dex can't really do that. That's a pro. And one other thing is that it does support many different types of monitor. That's actually a pro. It scales really well. It supports many different monitors. It also has some kind of display scaling option, if not the most great one, but some kind of. Now, one thing I would say is the stage manager now really works well with many different applications. Like a lot of applications have been updated right now and there are certain changes happen which I don't like. So let's say with the four different applications, you click on one and then you make it full screen, then all the others will actually go behind it. Like literally it will be, they will be minimized. That's not actually good though. And, and on top of everything else, if you put something in the background, there is no such guarantee that it will actually work. Let's say you're exporting something, you're putting it behind the scenes and you're working on something else. There is no guarantee that that export will finish. It will just be cut in the middle. That's not good. So it still behaves quite a bit like an iPad. It has a slightly different UI of using it. So which is not great though, because it has the M1 machines had the virtual memory swap. I don't know why they're doing it. Now, talking about the full screen though, it is actually a fantastic experience. Now, in my case, because I moved to a computer, so I don't really need it all that time. But when I do, when I do edit or when I'm doing on the desk, it is actually shocking to me. I plug my iPad to the USB-C hub and everything works. Like I can record the audios and do everything. Yes, my studio monitors also work with the iPad. It's, it's crazy good. It doesn't feel like it's an iPad OS. That time it feels something bigger than that. And when you're working with something like LumaFusion or certain other applications that really supports a full screen, unlike the Resolve, well, you're going to have a full on computer like experience. I really like it. So for those who use this iPad on their own with a smaller screen, now they can connect a big monitor to get the experience even immersive. So better. But there are certain things that are still missing and I don't really like it. One of them has to be the speakers. The speakers on the iPads are really good. But what if your monitor doesn't even have a speaker, which most of the time is the case. It will actually try to airplay the stage manager, which doesn't really make sense because you have to have a monitor with a speaker or you have to connect your speaker to the monitor or you have to connect the iPad with a USB-C hub through that you have to connect the speaker like I do or maybe you have to use the Bluetooth speakers. That's actually really bad considering the iPads have insanely good speakers for their size and the thinness. Now, the second thing is the files app is still not great. It is not that much feature rich, but whatever it is, it still doesn't work well all the time. Sometimes it freezes, sometimes it crashes, and I have to restart to get it working. There is no other fix. That at this point doesn't really make it look good. No. And on top of that, the four apps at once is also a big restriction on the screen. Some people really do have the ultra wide screens or even like dual up ergo monitors. So 
they can actually or even if you have a 4k monitor you can actually use a lot the space is more so you can use like more than four applications at once at the very least six applications but it doesn't allow that the same way it doesn't also allow two audio sources at a time forget about controlling individually but you can't even have that like if you are trying to let's say play a youtube music and at the same time or apple music or whatever and you want to just maybe go right ahead and do the video editing because the video editing also has its own sound that means the moment you play the play button on the Lua Fusion, bam, the YouTube video will stop playing. Simple as that. For me, that is one big of a restriction. Sometimes I want to watch a YouTube video on my iPad and I just want to work on the monitor and that's not possible. Now, one good thing is that the iPhone applications that, and they used to take off the full screen, now they don't. Now they run like iPhones and like, it's kind of like the virtual iPhone is running inside the iPad OS, kind of feels like that but it's running in a small pop-up window and you can have it you can pair it with anything uh, whether you talk about safari or any other application resolve or anything so that's actually real real improvement i really love it because i just don't have to move back and forth between twitter and instagram i can run them both all at the same time and post all at the same time so that's really really good now now that doesn't mean it doesn't have bugs though it does have but they have updated the ipad since the last time i made a video so many things have been fixed the small little bugs that you will face here and there sometimes aren't that important or aren't that major. But then you will probably asking me why you still use an iPad OS if you have a PC or anything like that. Well, the reason is that the portability factor that comes with the iPad is just amazing. That is unbeatable. And on top of that, the M1 chip inside my iPad is amazing. That I can't really believe that that kind of performance on a battery is possible and there is no fans, no nothing, no noise, and it's crazy good. So that's one big reason. And the second big reason has to be some softwares like Vectornator, LumaFusion, Procreate, and DaVinci Resolve. All of these things are here and you can work on them. Now, working on Resolve actually shows the flaws of the M1 chip inside an iPad because it pushes the iPad to its limit all the time. When I do export on it, I know the iPad actually bogs down a lot, a lot, I'm saying it. Now, you can't really say iPad is overpowered now because it is not anymore. Because there are softwares that might even come in the future with iPad OS 17 or even the future that will just use the juice of the M1 series or M2 series iPads. So, yeah, iPads are getting more professional over time. But the progression is so slow and so clunky that many people kind of move on from it. That's the worst part of iPad OS at this point. Otherwise, I love it because the portability factor, these applications, I can run the whole business on my lap. So that's probably how the iPad OS is in my life. I really like it, but I can't really say that this is the best option for most people. You will be better served by a Mac or a PC than this. So when you're a professional video creator or something like that, there are tons of applications and tons of programs that are only available on the Mac or even Windows PCs. So having an iPad won't really make sense for you. But if you have the applications right here and you work on it, then iPad OS 16 will actually enhance the experience even further thanks to this external monitor support, but for few iPads. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below how you are using the iPad OS 16 in your day-to-day -day life. And are you loving it or kind of hating it? So yeah, that's about it. If you want to see more episodes like this, then definitely do like this video and do subscribe to this channel. Also, visit my website, jointhevid.com link down below it's for everything that you're gonna get all these and more techniques way way faster than these videos so definitely visit it you can also find a lot of 8k wallpapers over there so why not just visit it until the next episode bye and take care